Wes here at Tick Creek Ranch. As promised, here's the full length build video on this log arch. Stick around to the end of the video and we'll show you how to make your own. Okay, so what we got here, we got some tires, spindles, hubs, and a tongue coupler. This was all purchased from Amazon. We'll leave links below. So this whole build should cost us around $500 for all the materials, stuff that was ordered from Amazon, and then all the materials we picked up at our local steel yard. Here we got two and a half inch by eighth inch tubing. We got two and a half inch by three sixteenths tubing. And we have inch and a half by eighth inch wall. This guy here was an extra a scrap from another project we might use for a brace, so it's just here. Make sure they sent us the right bolt spacing. Boom, there we go. This, uh, this is five on four and a half. Five on four and a half. And the tires we got here today are 175 80 13s. They're just little guys, but you know what? They'll do the job. They got a C load rating, 1,360 pounds single wheel load. These are rated at 1,250 pounds a piece. Way more than enough for this project. All right, so we're gonna take these. These are our legs that come down to our wheels. So we're gonna punch holes through the bottom of these, weld in our spindles. Boom, boom. And this will tilt up and have the tongue welded to this cross member. Okay, we're checking for depth here, clearance. So by the time we drill that all the way through this, you know, we got about a half inch of clearance, which will be perfect right there. All right, so we had to do a bunch of file work to true them up. The holes weren't perfectly aligned, unfortunately. So we had to do a little elongating. You know, that's the thing about hole saws, especially if they're not in a press. They love to walk. So it did, they walk, but I got them true now. We'll get them tacked up and welded in. All right, we got them welded up. Not the prettiest welds ever, but you know, that'll work. There's a little hole right there. So that's some flux inclusion. That happens here and there, you know, not perfect, but it'll hold. All right, we spent a little time getting those to fit. We got good angles now. All right, so we got this guy welded up. Greasing up some bearings. We'll get the seals hammered in. Get these hubs put on these spindles. And then we're gonna flip this thing over and continue to fat it up. And grease up the edge of that seal. And drive those in. Gotta be very careful when you drive a seal in. You don't kink it, damage it. So, you gotta take your time to make sure you tap them in really even. If you have a, a flat plate, that really helps. Let's go ahead and set a plate on it. Boom. A lot of times these don't quite have enough bevel on the shoulder and so they just they're almost impossible to start so 
I'll just flapper it off with a little bit longer bevel on this leading edge here and it'll help it get started. Knows how to put something there, like. All right, we're just gonna tack up some gussets here we got going in the corner. I started that one. We'll have another one here. Give us a little more strength. Uh, this this boy's just about done. On the tongue there, you'll see the coupler. We got a couple of carriage bolts. I didn't have the right bolts. Everybody's closed today, so we're just using it temporarily. We'll get the right bolts in there, but at least we can use the thing today and see how it works. So we got some, we got a bushing, we got a rubber bushing. These are all suspension parts. This is gonna be a roller. This is a greasable pin. This is gonna go on. That's gonna roll right up and down the tongue. So we'll see how this works. Not sure how it's gonna work, but in theory, it should work really well. I didn't know exactly how to connect the chain hook to this. So what we got here is a small shackle. It's a 3 8 shackle should be way more than adequate for strength. And we're filing it so it will fit and slide over to the center of this. And I'm gonna actually weld it on around this. Then we have a quick link and our chain hook. I went ahead and had to drill out the corners and then file that out. Cause I want this carriage and that square to engage. So this bolt doesn't turn, it sits stationary and forces the wheel here to spin. Because we're not gonna have this, we're not gonna bolt that up super tight. It'll just be a little sloppy so this can still roll in there. I'd like to find some real thin uh, brass washers to go on there but for now it's gonna go like that with the nylock there there we go Real quick, what do we got in this thing? I think we got about 500 bucks, not including the chain. And, oh, I don't know, probably six or seven hours. Maybe, let's let's say seven hours to fab it. I saw one particular log arch that was kind of similar and uh, I liked it best. So I kind of emulated that. This whole thing right here is my design. Now there's another one, I think Logosol makes it. 
It's real small, it's real light duty. Um, I think it probably works great for its intended purpose. This thing should handle a log. It's way bigger than that, than the one that they have designed. And you know, you can use this with a side-by-side -side pickup, four-wheeler, whatever. The whole idea of this is to be able to get in and out real, real easy, real light impact, not tearing the place up. And uh, you know, allow a guy with not a lot of means, not a lot of money to log and move stuff off his property. So technically speaking, you can log with this in a four wheeler or side by side. I guess if you have it, you know, you're so inclined, you have a horse, you could rig something like this up to a draft horse. But um, I think it's gonna work. I think it's gonna work well. So we're gonna go take and put this thing to use and uh, give it a test run. What do you think there, buddy? That's pretty slick. I think it's gonna work just splendid. Oh yeah. All right, hey guys, thanks for sticking around. Let's start up here in the front on the tongue. A real simple build here. What we got here is a Kirk two inch ball coupler, rated at 3,500 pounds, way overkill for what we're doing. So as we come back here, we took and mitered this at 10 degrees. This is two and a half inch by two and a half inch box tube 3 16 wall thickness. There we go, about 15 inches or so to that miter at 10 degrees. We're gonna give you this tongue dimension now. There we go, eight feet. All right, so this is a pretty important part of the build here. We wanna make sure that we are really well gusseted here. So we're welded to the top of this. Again, this is 3 16 wall thickness, 3 16 wall thickness, two gusset plates. And this wraps around all the way underneath. So it does give us a lot of shear. It's gonna prevent this tube from twisting if these wheels hit something like a stump or a tree. But you also have to remember, there's almost no rolling resistance on these tires because they're only carrying mostly a vertical load, right? So there's been some question about that. When you're pulling the log, all the load is being applied right here on the trolley. Boom, it stops right there and then all the force is pulling out here. It's putting the strain directly on the ball of the wheeler. So there's really very little load vertically on these legs. We got 48 inches in width, okay? And our legs here, overall length, ended up being 27 and a half inches. Now I changed these to actually eighth inch tubes. I didn't see the need, them being so short. So that's eighth inch. You guys can make it out of whatever you want, eighth inch, 3 16 quarter. If you want to go real heavy and you want to put bigger logs under this, well, add yourself six inches, eight inches, a foot, whatever is going to fit the logs that you're mostly going to be hauling. Now, a four wheeler probably isn't going to pull out a 36 inch diameter by 20 foot long log. So we'll just go with that assumption. So, you know, size it and scale it to what you're working with. If you have a little old 8 end tractor and it doesn't have a three point on it or one that's working, you just need to be able to pull something. Well, you're going to be able to pull a sizable log. So, you know, size this thing up. Everything is going to be in the description, all the links to the stuff that we used on this build, except for the trolley. Sorry, folks. This was just kind of a pieces and parts I got from our local trailer supply house walked in there and just started putting stuff together. We'll go over that. As you saw earlier in the video, we just drilled these out with a hole saw. Now, if you have a drill press handy, you're gonna be able to do this way easier than I was able to freehanding it with a drill since they walk. But at any rate, here we go. It's an inch and an eighth axle shaft, stub shaft for the spindle, drilled on both sides 
All right, for all of my equipment that I build, I always use or purchase a five on four five bolt pattern. That would be five bolts with a four and a half inch spread between them. That's gonna be your bolt pattern. Now, the reason I use that is because it's so common. It's an old Ford bolt pattern. It was used on a lot of their older cars. There's a million wheels out there. They're very common. Uh, lots of boat trailers, light utility trailers use them. The wheels and tires are affordable and they're all interchangeable for me now on the ranch. Say I blow a tire, oh, I can pull one off another piece, put it on, boom, I'm going again. All right, our tire size, we had a lot of questions about that. It's a 175, 80, 13, 13 inch wheel. We have a C load range. 1360 pounds we got plenty of tire these are 1250 pound axle shafts 1250 pounds each side you know between that and the tires i'd say we're way overbuilt for the logs we're going to be carrying now if you want to carry a much or skid a much larger log say a 20 footer by 36 inch butt you might want to consider going with you know a 15 inch wheel with a higher load rating or go with an eight ply tire now I still think that, you know, 2,000 pounds of capacity on this end is going to be fine. That means you've got a 4,000 pound log behind you. That's pretty sizable logs. This log arch should, without any problem, be able to handle a log at this size. It's a 20 foot log, 24 inches in diameter. If my skid steer can pick this up, which it can, that log arch can haul it. So this has generated quite a few questions. These are just suspension components that I picked up from our local trailer supply. Here we go, three quarter inch spring suspension bolts. This has a grease channel in it to lube this roller. And that is literally just a bushing with a steel sleeve in it. We have another bushing at the bottom that we welded a three eighths shackle on. And we have a closable link and a chain hook. Pretty simple. We got her greased up and she rolls really well. You saw in the video how it works. It, I've been very, very pleased with it. It's quarter inch plate. Now something to take into consideration if you didn't, this is a carriage bolt. So it has a square shoulder and we had to file that into this quarter inch stock. If you don't, that has a tendency to roll around putting the wear on these quarter inch straps instead of where it should be on the shaft. So. That helps isolate this, keeps it from turning. And mind you, these are big nylocks, so we didn't tighten it down so much, so it allows that play and that roll in there. So, works real good. It was a simple solution. I might have 20 bucks in this thing, 25 bucks. It wasn't much, so definitely a win. Last but not least, we got a couple of chain hooks welded on here. You know, if a guy wants to help cradle a log with an additional point of securement, good, great. I haven't used it a whole lot yet, but it sure is a nice place to carry your chain. So other than that, it's very simple. It works really well. I've been very pleased with the design. Uh, we're gonna continue using it. And if anything changes, bends, breaks, something that's underbuilt, I'll get back to you guys. But I don't think it's gonna. It seems really well built. I mean, the design is good. I feel like it's very strong. No worries. There's a lot of them out there on the market and this one's way more heavily built than most I've seen and they're rated to take every bit of what we're doing here with these logs. So I hope this information could help you folks build your own if you need one. That's what this channel is about. We try and experiment. You guys can laugh with us or at us, but you can learn from our mistakes, our failures, our wins. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.